episode two, Book of Pook. Uh, I'm really enjoying this section here so far. It's been a while since I've been into this book, so it'll be great. If you haven't watched the first episode, I'd say go watch it now. And we're picking up at the 15 yes Lessons for Young Men, You Are the Great Catch, which is Lesson 6. Uh, the whole story at the start of it is a guy kind of getting around to just be yourself. And I'm sure you guys have heard this stuff before, but I'll start with the quote here. Uh, the young man jumped up and down with joy. Goody. That means I get to be passive, to continue to indulge in my vaporous habits, and not do a thing to alter myself. I like to hear that because it means I am perfect as I am, and I ought not to change for anybody. So Puck slapped him. Foolish youth, if you are not changed by life, then you are not living life. Only those who are not altered by life are those totally unaware of it. But the young man was stubborn. I, he said with moral tone, will not change for anybody. And then what about yourself? I like myself the way I am. All right, enough. And then he gives you two stories about two men who were being themselves. The first one, letting life happen to him, and the other one, living life. He goes, the first man never broke free from the womb-like feeling around his mother. He sought to replicate it. Off he tumbled into reality like tumbleweed. Uh, he didn't know what he wanted to do in life, so he did what everybody else around him did. He was captive to his friends, never broke apart to tend to his own matters. Playtime was too important. And he eventually found a girl, chose one that actually liked him, or tolerated him, he couldn't know, and married. And the marriage only lasted a few years until divorce came. So why did she leave me, whined the pathetic male. I cherished her, I bought her flowers every day, I sang her songs, I always told her I loved her, and she complained, he disgusted me. So the man goes through life, broken, rebroken, trying fruitlessly to rebuild the sandcastle of childhood fun, while waves of reality kept crashing down on him, he dies forgotten and irrelevant. And this is to put my own little spin on this this is kind of the thing you have to understand is that there really is only two ways of doing things and i find that whole self-improvement do it for yourself just be yourself it's kind of a bad way of framing it like you're gonna life's going to alter you you can even go back as far as like mark twain's short amount of essays on what is man he makes a reference where a man is like a train where the train didn't build itself outside forces kind of shaped it and in that sense yeah you improving and you living life is going to change you. Like you're always going to be yourself. You can't be anybody else but yourself. But if yourself is just going to constantly let things happen to you as like a passive observer in his own life, don't be surprised when you're treated very poorly compared to women because women have like an intrinsic value. They have the baby maker. Eggs are expensive. Sperm is cheap. I'm sure you've heard it before. And if you're going to let life happen to you and you're at that state, you have a much better chance of just falling into at least a modicum of happiness. But as a guy, you don't get that. And thank God for it. So to follow on the second point here, he brings up the, the guy who was constantly self-improving, constantly doing things. And it's like, they're stuck in a type of stasis. I've changed. They acknowledge that, but they are still exactly the same. And he notices that you kind of, as you grow, as you change, and as life throws you more experience to change who you are, you're going to find that other people feel stagnant. It's not a big deal. It happens. You can still enjoy people's company. But if you always hear that thing about, you know, guys who had become red pilled and started changing up their lives and doing some great things for themselves, and now they have a hard time relating to people, that's essentially what it is. Do with it what you want. And then he mentions here, so he got to pick the women he wanted. He got to pick the career, got to pick his destiny. He answers life's challenges and refused to retreat for them. Whereas the first young man was defined by the age within he lived, the second young man defied the age himself. So when he died, a lot of people mourned and they thought he was a genius. Others thought he was talented beyond description, and they thought he was maybe touched by heaven. After all, how else could these poor fools realize success? It couldn't have been made. He had to have been born with it. It's like, nope. He was a man who chose to grind up the world, the culture, and all of his vision rather than be ground up by it into the worldly culture's axing wheel of routine and fashion. Again, you live life or you let life happen to you. The next lesson for young men, which is lesson seven, respect is all. And it starts off with a wonderful little story about a guy who was doing everything for his girlfriend, rubbing her feet, buying her coffee, doing all this stuff. 
eventually she just gets puts him in the friend zone. Hey, I think we should just be friends. I love you, but I'm in, not in love with you. And I'm sure many guys have heard this before. So to quote here, he goes, ah, he realized, by pleasing her whims, I lost track of mine. A servant she'll be, a friend she'll see. As the lesson is, respect is all. Pook does a little conversation with him, answer this riddle. Why do men who are willing to walk away turn you on to the girl? And the girl laughs. Didn't everybody know this? A man who can walk away means that he has his pick of the litter and the woman can be easily replaced. You won't find the lawyer or doctor or politician be entangled to a woman at first. He goes, all right, get out of here. Melts away in a blaze of fire and flame. I'm not sure if there's a reason that the girls always show up and leave with like a fireball. I don't know. I'm sure there's some kind of like wham and ain't shit into it. So if you already know, let me in the chat. So we asked Pook is like, so the great catch is always willing to walk away. The great catch is respect. She is supposed to celebrate life with you, not use you as a peon. Be a man and respect attends to itself. Now, when he says be a man here, I should be specific because this is the internet and this is the sphere of man and this is red pill. So very artistic crowd, if you know what I mean. When he says be a man, what he means taken from the last sentence from the last uh, lesson, living life not letting life happen to you. Passive observer, active participant. When he says be a man, he's essentially talking about the maturity to live and direct your own life, to grind up all those things that are influencing you and make your own make your own smoothie. Standard one, guys with approach anxiety, guys that think you need to be friends with girls first before you become romantic and the guy's having no success. So he faced a big problem. Talking to a woman normally he was fine with. Talking to her as a sexual outcome in mind made him feel guilty and dirty. He knew being desireless was keeping him from being desperate, but it wasn't getting him women. In fact, it seemed like those guys that desired women would have their desire reflected back. Then it hit him. Only the sexual ones get the girls. By the way, I got some great follow-up on this one. It's, I don't know what it is about guys, but they always think and it's something to do with the, the Madonna whore complex. If you don't know what that is, I deal with that in the other book from the sidebar series, Practical Female Psychology, where guys have this weird dichotomy of women in their mind where they are either the virgin Madonna or the whore of Babylon. And they always treat one as one and one as the other. They don't mind disparaging that one as like a broken or damaged girl, you know, which just hides their lack of ability to sleep with them anyway. And then the Madonna ones, they actively work themselves into a friend zone because by being openly sexual, it would kind of degrade their image in her image in their head. And they don't want to do that, which is the weirdest self-sabotage you're ever going to see a guy pull. If you have done it, just remember, uh, Nick August, great guy. Follow him on Twitter. Punch Riot Magazine. Very good. Puts it himself. Your grandmother used to undress for sailors. So Pook tapped the woman on the arm with his pointy stick. Women, he said, are entirely sexual creatures. They do not respond to your intellectualism. They don't respond to your genius. They only respond to your sexuality. And what do you mean, Pook? Most men are scared of their sexuality. Look at the chumps. They are not men. They are androgynous. They are ape-like. Then embrace your own sexuality. Be a guy. Talk like a guy. Act like a guy. Do action things. It's the one thing to talk about love. But most guys just want to talk to talk. Uh... It's actually funny here. So there was this great post, and I can't remember who wrote it, but I'm totally stealing it for Twitter, where he asked these, where he asked a question to like the, the red pill crowd. How many of you are able to just sit there and enjoy a blowjob? It sounds like a goofy thing, yeah, sure, and maybe a lot of you guys don't have this problem, which is fine too, but it was amazing how many guys realized just sitting there and to sit back and enjoy yourself and be sexual and not ashamed of it like, they didn't know what to do. They always had to ask what the girl was okay. They always had to worry. They're like, do I rub her back? What do I do? And it's only, like, the guys that get it and the guys who have, like, red-pilled themselves realize, just sit back and enjoy. If your girl wants to take care of you, let her take care of you. Be sexual. Don't be ashamed about it. These are the things that happen in life to normally sexually aware people. Just be cool with it. Charles Bukowski. Jordan Peterson. Neil Strauss. I like these guys. Add some salt to cover up the bitterness of middle-aged soccer moms and put in the oven for 45 minutes. Optionally, you can take from all this stuff what you want and leave the rest.
The next one, and this is one I like, it's do not contain yourself with formulas. It's lesson nine. Uh, they talk about psychological maneuvers. You must learn neuro-linguistic programming, the fancy words to say to hypnotize people and the guides. You shall learn and memorize the booklets of societal situations with women, ceaseless information. You shall never have too much information, commanded Manuel. Thus, countless articles, countless posts, streamed underneath the young man's eyes, and at the end of the day, he was still in front of the computer. But, uh-oh, something was not right. He had burned the mantra in his mind. You shall never stay on the phone longer than 20 minutes, only to break it, and he got a success. Also ingrained was the mantra, you shall never compromise, and lo and behold, when he broke the rule, he usually crashed and burned, but this time he achieved high-flying success. Soon, the rules that had so framed his courtly actions disintegrated, and he realized, these guides and rules were a clutch for my lack of confidence. They do not, however, work all the time and are overall limited. And then he smiled. The rules and guides are the training wheels, the helper out of the nest. No more shall he be completely dictated by that Spanish guy named Manuel. He could now fly and soar on his own. So ah, the young man pulled his hair. I used to think women were nice and charming, that only bad boys are the problem. This knowledge is shattering every ideal I had about women, and Pook nodded. Yeah, there are a few of harsh truths that you need to understand, and I love this quote. Women would rather share a successful man than be attached to a faithful loser. Does that sound familiar to you? Thought it would. So many women don't marry for love. Most divorces end with a guy cherishing the woman, but the woman detesting the man. And women place value in societal links. How they are thought of, you become her ego. There is so much to break down in this whole like small section that I just took a piece from. Again, a lot of guys talked about like mystery method and yad stops and the London day game model and all that pickup stuff, which whatever. Here's the thing. They aren't made to be like a guide on how to get women. They're not. They are training wheels. Turns out when you walk up to somebody, you can say just about anything. If your body language is right. If you're attractive, if she's bored, you know, if anything is in there that kind of makes these things happen, a lot of guys, in fact, most people can make this stuff flow naturally, but not everybody can. No shame in that. We all learn at our own pace. We all learn at our own time. So for some guys, they just think, I don't know what to say to a girl when I walk up to her and I'm interested in her. So that's when openers were made. Here's the things you can say. You know, here's a, here's a, is it cheating? I got an opinion opener. Is it cheating if I sleep with a girl in a different area code or... Uh, the yad stop and i'm not really good with that one but it doesn't really matter the point is it gives you something to do so you have an idea where you can go it turns out there's like a hundred thousand things you could possibly say in an opening with a new person but these ones give you a structure and then once you do the structure and you do it enough you start to realize that you don't really need it anymore you'll skip steps you'll do things you're not supposed to do sometimes you'll go out of your way to kind of get yourself shot down just to see what a rejection is like Maybe your buddies, Carl and I always talk about this on on uh, Red Mornings where guys will actively get shot down and whoever gets shot down the best gets his drinks paid for for the night. So you're actively going around trying to see how not to be attractive. And it turns out doing it with such confidence actually be makes it pretty hard after a while. So most of the stuff you're going to see, the how-to guides, doesn't matter who's offering it, what gun mode course is offering it to you. It's just a set of heuristics, set of training wheels, and then once you got it down, you can promptly forget it. Uh, second part here, I had to steal it in there because it was like a uh, Rolo rational male quote. I love throwing that one in there. Like, oh, that's where he got it from. Yeah, that's where he got it from. The next parts, I would actually have to do a book. It's not the sidebar series, but it absolutely should be. Where they talk about women not marrying for love and the woman detesting the guy by the end of the divorce. Partially that's from David Buss and Cindy Mintz, an evolutionary psychologist, had a book, uh, Why Women Have Sex. It shows the... 800 reasons that girls have sex with men and women too. I think that's a bunch of uh, LGBT types in there. But the point was there's like 800 reasons and sexual desire is about 752 on the list. And then on top of it, where the guy cherishes the woman and she can't stand him at the end. If you go back to practical female psychology, they actually talk about that in what's called the betaization of men process, which is funny because most, almost all relationships have like a start point and an end point, and they follow very predictable phases. Starts off with testing the man, you know, make sure he's he's like really a good catch because women don't normally trust their own instincts. So they have like these little cognitive tricks they use. Then getting him to open up, basically getting him hooked. That's where the whole tell me about your feelings thing comes from. 
putting him to work because, I mean, what's the point of having a man around the house if you can't open jars of pickles and fight spiders? Then it goes to uh, self-determination, or not self-determination, evolutionary selfishness, where, you know, nothing the guy ever does is good enough. And so it builds up this cycle of resentment. It's a girl basically psyching her brain up to leave. And then finally, self-determination, where she decides to go do her own thing and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's good to know these phases can happen quickly or slowly or sometimes over a lifetime. Sometimes you guys do keep it in for the long haul. But just being aware of these ones, again, you're going to realize what happens in these phases and what you should be looking out for. So if you're not getting those tests early on in the relationship, she's not with you because she desires you. She's with you because maybe she's got baby rabies or maybe she really wants to get married or maybe her mom said she had to marry a good Indian boy and so you're a good Indian boy and you guys settle down. Just realize, yeah, get out of your head. Stop thinking about these things so romantically and have a little bit of jadedness to it because it's amazing how many horrible red flags guys miss because they're too busy thinking with the little head as opposed to the big head. As you think, you shall become lesson 10. Uh, it's a nice one. Women come and go, but you were forever. The focus must be on you. What do you want in a girl? What do you want in a date? What type of relationship are you looking for? It's a machine to the one. You push the button and out she comes. Oh, but Puck, what if she doesn't like my date ideas? What if she's different than what I'm looking for? It's like, then she's not for you. This things, these things these girls hate is when you cannot have a date idea you have a series of hobbies and tastes. If she likes your date ideas, then that's good. If she doesn't, then go get another one. There's billions out there. This isn't so much, like a lot of guys will read this and think, didn't you just tell me the being yourself thing and don't do that? It's like, yeah, yeah, that's not what he's saying. What he's preaching here is abundance. And it's, it's one of those lessons that girls kind of intuitively know because since they've been 13, thousands of dudes have been trying to hit on them and trying to sleep with them. So they have no fear of being able to find a man. Maybe finding a husband might be an issue, but not finding a man. And the idea is you need to have that level of abundance in your life. And so he talks about all these flippant ideas of why you should ditch girls. Yeah, you got to internalize that because it actually, it changes how you behave and makes you generally more attractive. And I guarantee you the guy with that kind of abundance doesn't settle for something that's arguably bad for him. So just remember, I'll quote this bit here, you can't be yourself without truthfully seeing yourself. You can't sacrifice character or joyfulness without ultimately destroying happiness. You can't control the situation. You can only control yourself, your emotions, and your life. You can't have women love you until you love yourself. You can't grasp female nature until you grasp your male nature. You can't win her until you focus on winning you. You can't fully know the principles of this website until you leave it. You cannot, I like that one by the way. Basically, get the hell out of here. You should know enough by now to get started. Uh, you can't obtain love by giving yours away for free you can't fulfill your desire by letting it trump your integrity and you can't be yourself by denying your dreams and what it takes to achieve them again i like how he defines being yourself yourself is a process it's not a person it's not an identity getting a girl is not success lesson 11. now the error is guys defining their success on having a woman or woman they should rather be concerned with having a woman does that does actually like them. So why do you say this, Puck? It sounds like a bit more work. He's like, yes, but if you do this, then you won't be like the following. Brings up a bunch of very loserish guys, and I'm sure you guys have heard these, these points before. You know, she said we love me when we got married. Why does she want a divorce now? All my friends thought she was a keeper. Why is she cheating on me with her ex? She won't return my repeated calls. What's going on? I do her date ideas and she thought I was boring. What does that mean? And Puck shakes his head. When you aim at something long-term, you need to make sure that woman likes you. Just because she dates you, sleeps with you, and yes, even marry you, doesn't mean she likes you. And the guy's like, so what should I do? He goes, you define what the dates are at first. She will work with you if she likes you. You can soften up later in a couple months, but if she starts breaking dates, giving you the runaround, or seems inflexible, then that should be warning signs that she doesn't like you. There, I know this sounds like a goofy little thing here, but here's... There's actually a wonderful psychological reason for this. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard about BPD or borderline personality disorder. It's also called like the extreme woman disorder. Psychologically speaking, you take a bell curve, you take the, uh, the, the traits that are involved with uh, borderline personality disorder, put them on a bell curve. 
Most people fall in the middle of the bell curve, one standard deviation. Two standard deviations is a bit kind of extreme. Three standard deviations is a disorder. So that's not saying that all the borderline personality traits are bad traits, you know, like infatuated with things, almost like the best way I've heard people describe it is like being an actress in somebody else's one man play. It's like the perfect fit for the narcissist, which is the male one. So here's the thing. If a girl is into you, she will start to like the things you like. If you're a San Francisco 49ers fan, and I don't know why you would be, or if you're a Browns fan, or if you're a Canucks fan, the girl who's into you will start to like the Canucks. She'll start to like the Browns. If you're really good, she might even like the 49ers. But that's the point. And here's the thing. A lot of guys think, well, she's just doing that to, because she's trying to get into your good graces. It's like, no, this is what you don't understand about a healthy level of borderline personality before the disorder. It's their brain actually wires them to like the things that the man that they like is into. So yeah, you should notice this. In fact, more often than not, it's a great red-pilled post. I think it was Uncle Vaz where he says, no woman you meet will have a hobby that she came up with by herself. There's always some man in her life who introduced her to it, whether it's her father, an ex-boyfriend, or something. It's also good to know for cheating, because if a girl all of a sudden starts picking up random new hobbies that you didn't know about and came out of nowhere, well, it might let you know that your time's about to come to an end. It's one of those little warning signs to keep control of. But yeah, again, what I love here, it's not so much that Pook is describing it as like, this is how things works. He gets you to understand the actions. Do the things you want to do. And if she's into you, she'll do those things too. I think Rolo puts it the best. If uh, a woman will crawl through broken glass for her top tier man. And in this case, it's not so much crawling through broken glass, but she actively rewires her brain to be into what he's into. So if it's happening to you, enjoy it and give a girl a chance to get into you. Start doing the things you like. And if she's into you, she can start enjoying them too. Congratulations. You just invited her to whatever goofy hobby it is you had. And now she loves it. And then we ended off with uh, lesson 12, Unite, Dream, and Day. Now, I'm not going to do the whole chapter because this one's a big, long, flowery mess. I did sneak out one part that I think encapsulated the best. So I'll just put the quote in here. Uh, some voice speaking in the, you know, the aether. But women want you to live in your own world, to stop bending over and be spanked, not in the good way. A willy-billy translating into a tampon that every woman uses for her needs, emotional, physical, and social. You are the equivalent of the woman doing whatever to please the men. Yes, the girl that is in the smokehouse where every man does place his meat weird reference you are the magical tampon where every woman does place in her <laughs> all the things women want confidence humor spontaneity fun these are all qualities of a man living out his imagination embrace your dreams stop trying to be perfect in the woman's eyes the wrong and truest commandment with sexuality do not bore woman and unite dream and day again uh take from this what you will my takeaway from it is stop trying to be the perfect guy. Stop trying to be the alpha male. And I know this sounds stupid, like be yourself, but it's not. You have a thing you want to do. If you want to be an author, start writing books. Start talking to people. Be passionate about it. You know, work your ass off. I, I had a post way back in the day called The Duck. And then everybody just sees a duck swimming on the lake and looks pretty cool, nice and calm. And underneath, he's paddling like crazy. But the duck is being himself. And himself is that pathway to become the best man that he can be in the ways that matter to him. And that second part is important. You have to decide what your metrics of success are. Just being okay with the way you are now, that's being stagnant and that's deciding to check out a life and it doesn't work. So again, this stuff's a bit flowery, but I do enjoy it and it helps guys because heaven forbid, did not know this myself, but a lot of guys in the, in the red pill aren't artistic. They actually kind of like a, a more literary sense of how this stuff works and the kind of mindset shifts you need to have or what I would call as mental models. Again, don't look at these things like they're how-to guides, how to man, how to pick up chicks, how to be red pill. This one here is more like, I want you to picture this story in your head and do what this story has and it anchor this to your decisions. So in this case, unite dream and day. If you have dreams, if you have things you want to accomplish, go accomplish them. Unite the things you're dreaming about with the things you're actively doing. So when you make decisions like, well, I'm going to work at Google and my girlfriend wants to move to Cincinnati for some reason to be closer to her mother-in-law, what should I do? Well, in this case, 
Your dream is to work for Google, which I don't know why it would be, but let's say it is. I only think of this because I actually know somebody who did this. So your goal is here. It's like, no, I'm not going to move in with your mother-in-law. Now, if the girl likes you, again, we just said it before, if she likes you, still like, she'll like your decision too. And she'll stay there and you'll work there and you'll be happy. And there's nothing that'll kill a marriage more than a guy saying, yeah, I'm having fun. I've got the perfect career. I'm walking distance from work. It's like wonderful. And we got tons of money. And she's like, well, I want to live closer to mom just in case for taking care of the baby. The guy acquiesces. They get back there. The mother-in-law is a train wreck and a bit of a, a bit of a harpy. And now everybody's miserable and it's his fault. No matter what happens, it's always your fault. So if it's going to be your fault either way, then you might as well make the decisions you want to make. At least then you've earned the right to have everything blamed on you. So I hope you enjoyed this one, by the way. These are kind of fun. Uh, we got a bunch more episodes coming up. The last three lessons to you uh, young men, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the stuff. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.